Brothers and sisters, good morning. And we start this week's morning devotion today. And today, Pastor Joshua will lead us to study the book of Isaiah, chapter 31, uh, 32. Chapter 32 and 33, they are connected with chapter 30 and 31. Chapter 30 and 31 talk about relying on Egypt is foolish. Relying on man is foolish. We will eventually fail if we trust the authority, the power on earth. So you go and rely on Egypt by riding on a horse. So when King Hezekiah faced a serious attack, so God is righteous, but how come? It is done by Judah. It's caused by Judah. So it is caused by the king, Joash. That's why he has to go and look for Assyria. After Syria has defeated the two kings, then the great flood from Assyria came. So uh, the river, the great river from Assyria will flood over your place in Judah. Go and find Assyria and then Assyria will come and overflow unto you by the flood. So when a great flood of Assyria came, what would he do? Then King Hezekiah secretly went to look for Egypt. In the past, the king looked for Assyria. And then Assyria came to attack them. But now the, he secretly went to Egypt for help. Is Egypt reliable? So in chapter 30 and 31, Isaiah said, it is foolish to do that. So, salvation, how do you receive salvation? You need to repent and rest. However, you are not willing to quiet yourself and trust God. Now you are facing the great river of Assyria, what you should do. In order to receive salvation and your strength, you need to quiet yourself. So from the attack of Assyria, you should receive salvation. But how? So you return to quietness, repentance, and quietness. Your strength is from God. It's not from Egypt. So do not go down to Egypt. But you are not willing You sent your envoys secretly to Egypt, riding on a horse. Isaiah said, I saw you. God saw you. Do not think that we didn't know. Now you have gone to Sohan, and you went there. And all the way to Egypt, you were seeking for the army of Egypt. You relied on Egypt. So as in chapter 30, you said you will flee, as, as in verse 16, you said, no, we will flee on horses, therefore you will flee. You said, we will ride off on sweet horses, therefore your pursuers will be swift. You trust the men, the power of men. In the past, you were like that, but you never repent. For those who pursue after you, they will run swiftly after you. And you will surely be pursued by those army. Chapter 30, verse 17. A thousand will flee 
At the threat of one, at the threat of five, you will all flee away till you are led like a flag staff on a mountain top, like a banner on a hill. You will be pursued after. You will die a tragic death. No one will remain. But the prophecy of Isaiah didn't just stop here. Starting from chapter six, remember we talked about it in the mercy seat. So over those two days, because that chapter is very important. That chapter talk about the stump of the tree will give birth, will grow holiness. Let's go back to chapter six. The last verse of chapter six. Verse thirteen. And though a tent remains in the land, it will again be laid waste. But as the terebinth and oak leave stumps when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump in the land. The holy seed will be the stump in the land. The prophet Isaiah continued to preach this message. However, people continue to rely on the power on the earth. They don't rely on God. But God showed them mercy, because God has covenant with Abraham and David. He will not snuff out the light of David. He will preserve. So David's descendants, even though man has forsaken God, didn't rely on Him, but God is still faithful. He's just. He will surely judge people. He will judge the sin of man. But what He promised, He will surely, will surely come to pass. That's why. Chapter thirty. Verse eighteen. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show you compassion, for the Lord is a God of justice. The original test of justice is so He proclaimed judgment. He proclaimed judgment with justice. He give. He's the one who gives verdict. So He will send down judgment, but His judgment is just. That's why we call him the God of justice. Yes, we know that God will judge His people. He will pursue after the sin of man. He will accomplish what He said to Abraham and David, because He made a covenant with the people of Israel. Man will rebel against the covenant with God, but God will never do this. Blessed are all who wait for Him. So chapter thirty-one, it tells us that man is not willing to wait for God. That's why the first one of thirty-one says, "Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help." God wanted to protect you, but you went down to Egypt. This is so foolish. You do not have to be afraid because. Assyria will fall by the sword. You know, God will surely deal with Assyria. You know, God has prepared the fire to devour Assyria. What is waiting ahead for the king of Assyria is the funeral. The fire of God will consume him. Isaiah. Said to Hezekiah and the people of Judah, "Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of Assyria. God will surely protect you at your city gate. Assyria will come and attack you because of your sins. But I will protect you. I will judge King Assyria. What's waiting for you ahead of you is revival. What is waiting for 
King Assyria is death. Why do you have to go down to Egypt? Then we now come to chapter 32 and 33. The title for chapter 32 is verse 15. Till the Spirit is poured upon us from on high, and the desert becomes a fertile field, and the fertile field seems like a forest. Six, verse 16. Justice will dwell in the desert, and righteousness live in the fertile field. Till the Spirit is poured upon us. The title is, We Shall Wait for the Holy Spirit and Trust God. Praise God that this coming um, Sunday is the Feast of Pentecost. And then we, we're reading this scripture, till the Spirit is poured upon us from on high. So let us prepare for this Sunday service. The Spirit will pour out unto us. And this Sunday uh, and Saturday is me who will preach. The Spirit is poured upon us from on high. But we have to wait. That we have to wait for the Lord's day. Till the Spirit is poured upon us from on high, everything will change. Now Assyria is coming. Assyria has besieged a lot of places in Judah. But God is still with Judah. So God is with Judah. It doesn't mean that Judah will not be attacked and besieged. Because God is the God of justice. Judah has to be made accountable for her sin, but God showed her mercy. God is her hope. Now you are facing Assyria. Everything is in the hand of God. You don't need to go down to look for Egypt. God himself will protect you. First 1 to 8. See, God will surely raise up a righteous king. Verse 1 to 4. It's talk about uh, how this king of righteousness is like. Verse 1. See, a king will reign in righteousness, and rulers will rule with justice. Each man will be like a shelter from the wind. And a refuge from the storm, like streams of water in the desert, and the shadow of a great rock in a thirsty land. Then the eyes of those who see will no longer be closed, and the ears of those who hear will listen. The mind of the rash will know and understand, and the stammering tongue will be fluent and clear. God will reign as king. He is the righteous king. How did he do that? God raised up a king in Israel. God has to raise up men. Verse 2, each man will be like a shelter from the wind and a refuge from the storm. He's talking to King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah, I have to raise you up. Through you, that your nation will be reigned by justice and righteousness. So you have to reign with righteousness. While you reign as king, you'll be like a shelter from the wind. You'll be like streams of water in the desert and the shadow of a great rock in a thirsty land. 
God is saying to Hezekiah, while you reign as king, there will be peace. Yeah, there will be storm, but you are the shelter from the wind, a refuge from the storm. God is with you. So the righteousness of God will let you reign as king in Judah through his righteousness. Verse 3, then the eyes of those who, will, who see will no longer be closed. He will see, and the ears of those who hear will listen. That is to say, everyone can receive knowledge. Everyone will see the work of God. Everyone will have their eyes opened. They could see the work of God among them. You will have peace. And even the mind of the rash will know and understand the knowledge. And the stammering tongue will be fluent and clear. Under the reign of this king, people will change. Yes, those people can be changed. For those who will not change, what happened? While this king is ruling, it is uh, verse 5 to 8. It explains further. Verse 5. No longer will the fool be called noble, nor the scoundrel be highly respected. For the fool speaks fully. His mind is busy with evil. He practices ungodliness and spreads error concerning the Lord. The hungry he leaves empty, and from the thirsty he withholds water. Verse 7. The scoundrel's methods are wicked. He makes up evil schemes to destroy the poor with lies, even when the plea of the needy is just. But the nobleman makes noble plans, and by noble deeds he stands. The fool, the scoundrels, will be further refuted by God. God is just. So for those things which can be changed, will change. For those who are not willing to change, they will never change. So the fool will not become the wise, but God will reveal his foolishness. Verse 8, but the nobleman makes noble plans, and by noble deeds he stands. The noble will be refuted as noble, and for the fool will be refuted as foolish men. The scoundrels will be refuted as scoundrels. The humble will be refuted as humble. He is gracious. They can be changed. The humble... The eyes of the humble will see. Their ears can hear. He's willing to listen. He's willing to change. Even though he was like um, a rash, but he could be changed. And those with stammering tongue, they will be fluent and clear in speech. So, this is the effectiveness of a righteous king. For those who is willing to change, willing to listen, they will be changed. For those who are not willing to listen, those people will continue to refuel their foolishness. For those who are good will refuel their goodness. God is just. So this is the righteous king reigning there, ruling over there on earth. Now, the king was facing the Assyrian Empire. God said to Hezekiah, God will reign through you. God has chosen you. God has given you peace. God is with you. The, when the great river flow over Judah, 
The God of Emmanuel is still there with Judah. God still works. Hezekiah, why do you have to be frightened? Why do you go down to Egypt? God has to raise you up, build you up, and use you. God has to strengthen you. Why do you have to flee to Egypt for help? Brothers and sisters, when we are facing different levels of difficulties in Hong Kong, when we face COVID, all kinds of problems, why do we have to fear? Why do we have to ride on horses and flee for help? God promised that He will be with us. We have to trust Him. We have to wait for God. God is our strength. Man's help is in vain. The, the help from Egypt is in vain. And even Assyria, we cannot trust Assyria. God wants us to trust in Him. In today's environment, let our heart turn to quietness. Let us have quietness and be still. Wait for God. God will work. Today, we are waiting for COVID to pass away. Our way ahead, even our country, in all nations, the one who reigns is God. God rules over all things. So I say, or say these words is not only saying to Hezekiah when they face the attack from Assyria, and even when they were reigned by Persian Empire, the people of Judah went into exile. So under the Persian policies, they could return from exile. The book of Isaiah was written after the people returned from exile. So in the time of Hezekiah, Isaiah has spoken these prophecies. His prophecy was there. And after the people returned from exile, so uh, people compiled this book from the words of Isaiah. So these words are also for the people of Judah who returned from exile. Exile in the time of Persian Empire. They don't have any protection. They were facing the bondage from the foreign attacks. So in Judah, they only have Zerubbabel as the governor. So above Zerubbabel, uh, they have the governor of Euphrates. And this governor is against Judah. He's a Gentile. So they uh, reported to a king, the Persia, saying that uh, the people of Judah rebelled against the government. So the people of Judah were facing a lot of difficulties. So we see that the book of Ecclesiastes came out under such a dilemma. Under the light, under the sun, there is nothing new. Under the sun, what should we do? We have to see beyond the sun. Beyond the sun is God reigning. God reigns over people. There is eternity. The eternal God is there. Even though it seems that God is not among them, the people of Judah thought this way. They were facing the Persian Empire. But God said to them, God reigned even under 
the Persian Empire so that they could return from exile. The king of Persia even gave them money, then sent the people back home to rebuild the temple, rebuild the city wall. This is all from God. So the, to, to the people returning from exile, they received the message, you must trust God. It's the same for us. God reigned above all. He reigned in his trees. Even God reigned over COVID. So there, there are like 300 um, cases of virus being spread all over the world now. It seems that there is a new virus. And WHO has been proclaiming this. A new wave of virus is coming. You know, people are so tired fighting against COVID. Uh, we don't know what is coming ahead. But I must know. God is our trust. Let's wait upon him. We have to wait for the Holy Spirit to pour upon us from above. Verse 9 to 20. In chapter 32. So the Holy Spirit will pour upon us. We have to wait upon him. Wait upon him. So after judgment, there will be revival. After the great river, the flood, there will be revival. And the people of Judah, you will be able to overcome this flood. Yes, there will be disaster. You will, there will be loss after the flood. But you will still be there with the revival. Verse 9, you women who are com so complacent, the people of Judah, rise up and listen to me. It refers to the people of Judah. You daughters who feel secure, hear what I have to say. In little more than a year, you who feel secure will tremble. The grape harvest will fail and the harvest of fruit will not come. A little more than a year, the judgment will come. Calamity will come. The great flood will cover you. There will not be any harvest of grapes and fruit. You will tremble. Verse 11. Tremble, you complacent women. Shudder, you daughters who feel secure. Strip off your clothes. Put sackcloth around your waist. You will be greatly attacked under judgment. You will lose a lot of things. And even you will be stripped off with, from your clothes. And you will be bullied by the Gentiles and be killed. Verse 12. Beat your breasts for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful wines, and for the land of my people. You will lose everything. And a land overgrown with thorns and briars. Yes, mourn for all houses of merriment and for this city of referee. Verse 14, the fortress will be abandoned. The noisy city deserted. Citadel and watchtower will become a wasteland forever. The delight of donkeys a pasture for flocks. Then the, the place of Judah will face judgment. There will be great calamities and people will lose a lot of things. And even the palace has been deserted. And citadel and watchtower will become a wasteland forever. And many pe places will be besieged. So after a while, you, you should be able to overcome 
Verse 15, till the Spirit is poured upon us from on high after judgment. The Spirit of God will pour upon us from above. And the desert becomes a fertile field. And the fertile field seems like a forest. The desert will be changed to become fertile land. And the fertile land will grow into a forest. Verse 16. Justice will dwell in the desert and righteousness live in the fertile field. So it can be explained this way. Justice, the original test is judgment. Now judgment will come to the desert. And in your city will dwell righteousness. Even in the desert, there will be justice. The desert will be changed. So the desert becomes a fertile field, and the fertile field seems like a forest because God is there. God reigns as king. Now, after the judgment, the righteousness of God will come upon us. Righteousness will dwell, dwell among us. The effectiveness of righteousness is peace. Be steady until forever. Verse 18. My people will live in peaceful dwelling places, in secure homes, in undisturbed places of rest. This righteous king come. How the people of Judah will experience peace in their dwelling place when this righteous king reign. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. We have to wait for the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will pour upon us. Spirit, the Spirit will bring revival. We should not go and trust Egypt. It's useless. It will bring further calamities. But we trust God. God will give us a king. God has to strengthen our king, Hezekiah. God will let Judah change. So after the attack from Assyria, Judah was like desert. But this desert will become a fertile land. And a fertile field seems like a forest. What is this forest? This is a righteous forest. Righteousness will dwell among us. The effectiveness of righteousness is peace, steadiness. And the people will, be, will live in peaceful dwelling. This righteous forest is the forest of the tree of life. No matter is the people of Judah or the Israelites. Originally, they embrace the tree in the world. This is what chapter 1 and 2 tells us. When we are in chapter 5, God said, I have to plant them. God has to plant the vineyard. In order to have uh, the good grapes, however, it bears the um, poisonous grapes. God was so unhappy. Then God said, I have to plant you as the tree of righteousness again. So it's more obvious when we come to chapter 61. And here in this chapter, it talk about the righteous forest where righteousness will dwell there. God has to raise up a king to do this. When God raised you up, what should you do? Especially with the authorities. Verse 19. Though hail flattens the forest and the city is leveled completely, how blessed you will be. 
sowing your seed by every stream, and letting your cattle and donkeys range free. So I don't have much time left. When we are in revival, especially King Hezekiah leading the revival, must humble himself, knowing that God is just. So in revival, do not be proud. Hezekiah was being prideful in revival. That's why he brought about these calamities. And the people went into exile afterwards. The prophet Isaiah reminded him, "When you become a forest, do not become proud of yourself. When you are revived, do not be proud. But you have to continue to sow your seed by the stream. And you know that all these forests will be cut down when you get prideful." Brothers and sisters, today God raised us up. We have to wait for the Spirit. We will prosper. Let us not be like King Hezekiah, especially for myself. We have to humble ourselves. We have to repent, confess our sins. Many people say, "Oh, we don't need to repent anymore," especially there are some teachings elsewhere. And some brothers and sisters come to challenge me, Pastor. You always say about repentance. You know,、uh, a certain church in Singapore doesn't need to do that. They have left us. How come you have to say repentance all the time, especially as men? We have to repent even more, and even I have to repent sins for my wife. How come, brothers and sisters? When you don't repent and confess your sins, when you are in desperation, when you are in distress, ah,、oh, it is okay if you don't confess your sins. You continue to be distressful. But when you're being raised up, when you have the authority, you don't confess your sins. You will be cut down. That's why after King Hezekiah, he has a son named Manasseh. God will never forget the sins of Manasseh until the nation of Judah has fallen. Oh, what a tragedy! And miserable. It is miserable. So let us remember: in revival, we must humble ourselves. Bless you all.